Hello everyone, my name is Bryce Watson. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at some word problems. Basically from previous Canadian Math Kangaroo contests, and uh, the objective today is to get you ready for the upcoming test that will be sometime in the future, and I hope all of you guys participate because it's a lot of fun. You gotta love math. Anyway, let's get started. So, uh, we're going to be solving five word problems uh, from previous Kangaroo Math Canada tests. I know you, but I'm going to help you. So I'm going to circle the info important to solving the problem in red. Determining what is and is not important in a word problem is the key to solving such problems. Now you might be thinking like, Ugh, why should we practice these other than doing it for the tests? Well, you may not always see them written in the same way, but people are often confronted with word problems all the time. Like last Saturday, my mowing dilemma. I woke up at 8 a.m. with plans to go fishing at 8.30. However, my mother reminded me I have to mow the lawn. So I have 30 minutes to mow my rectangular lawn. If I mow back and forth in the long direction, I will finish at six sweeps, each taking five minutes. If I mow the short way, it will take 12 sweeps, two minutes each, each of them 24 minutes. But the mower's heavy. I'm not that strong. It takes me 30 seconds to turn the mower each time. Which way is faster? Well, you need, obviously we circled all the elements of take of how long it would take me to mow the lawn because we're trying to determine how long it's going to take me to mow the lawn. So in this case and in many, the most important information is really the numbers. How many sweeps, how much time per sweep, but also how much time per turns because that's what's really going to determine what the right answer is here. And if you do the math, you'll figure out that actually if we take 12 sweeps, it's going to take me another six minutes if you account for the turns. So it's going to take me 30 minutes to mow the lawn. But if I do it the other way, it only takes me three minutes with all with the six turns, 30 seconds each. So that means I should turn, do it the long way if I want to get to fishing on time. First up, we have a question about a young man reading a book. Don't know what book, but let's, let's look at his reading habits. This is question 13 from the 2009 test. Uh, Today is Sunday. Francis begins to read a book with 290 pages. He reads four pages each day, except on Sundays when he always reads 25. He does not skip any day without reading from the book. And our question is, how many days will it take him to read the book? So I circled all the information I did because it's important to know how much he reads each day. Really, when does he read and how much? Um, basically, what we're going to do is we can determine how much he reads in one week and then determine how many weeks it's going to take him to read 290 pages. Just some basic math. And uh, since he starts reading on a Sunday, it might be better for us to consider the week to run from Sunday to Saturday. Therefore, it just makes counting weeks easier. So let's get right into it. Let's consider Frank's reading week. Uh, let's bring up the days of the week. And so we got Sunday, he reads 25 pages, and every other day he reads four. So if we do some quick math, uh, six times four, six other days in the week, plus 25 means he reads 49 pages a week roughly 50. We're going to use 50 to get a rough estimate of how many full weeks he'll be reading the book. Looking at multiples of 50, uh, 50 times 5 is 250, and 50 times 6 is 300. Book's 290 pages, right? So he's gonna, it's going to take him at least five weeks, but not six. So it's going to take five and less than a week to read the book. Uh, so by five weeks, he will have read 245 pages. Uh, we know that because 49 times five is 245. Um, how many pages does he have left? Well, we take the total number of pages, 290, subtract it from what he's already read. He has 45 pages left. We notice immediately that 45 is four less than 49. So that means he can take off the last Saturday and he'll finish by the Friday of the sixth week. That means he will, it will have taken him a total of five weeks and f uh, six days, which is a total of 41 days. So uh, we're going to have to move right along here. We don't have too much time. So right on to question five from 2010. This question is all about legs. A fly has six legs while a spider has eight legs. Together, two flies and three spiders have as many as 10 birds and several cats. How many cats are there is what the question is really saying. 
So I circled all the information I did because we need to know how many animals there are and how many legs each of them has. Because what we're basically going to do is f count up all the legs and figure out how many we need to make the number of spider and fly legs equal to cat and bird legs. So the name of the game is find the number of legs of insects total, subtract the number of legs of birds, and you're going to find the number of legs of cats. From that, we'll find the number of cats. We're going to assume all cats have four legs for this, for this uh, but that's not always the case, we know, but we're just going to make an assumption. We've got two flies, three spiders. Uh, we also have ten birds flying in now on Red Bull, as you can tell. So let's count up the legs. Uh, six legs on a fly, eight on a spider. Uh, six times two is 12, plus eight times three, which is 24. 12 plus 24, 36. Birds only have two legs. There's 10 birds, 20 legs. That means for there to be an equal number of legs total, there needs to be 16 cat legs, which we assume is attached to four cats. Cats have four legs. Four times four is equal to 16. So the answer is four cats. All right, I'm liking what I see. Let's keep up the pace. On to question 16 from the same test in 2010. Uh, our friend Ben chose a number, divided it by seven, then added seven to the answer, and finally multiplied this number by seven. As a result, he obtained the number 777. The question is, what was the number he started with? So just like our animal problem, we're solving for an unknown, which is a starting number. We'll call it x. Uh, the info I circled in red is done to get x to get 777. Everything I've circled is basically just steps taken to get to 777. All we need to do now is solve for x. All right, so once again, I'll tell you that Ben chose a number. We'll call it x. He divided it by 7. He then added 7 to this, and then finally to that, he multiplied by 7, and he got 777. Now, to solve by x, we need to isolate it. So basically, the process of isolating it is the reverse of the steps that Ben took, in the, the opposite of each step, and also in the opposite uh, direction. So we're going to start with this third step, third step, when he multiplied by 7, but we're going to divide by 7. So, bang, we get rid of the 7. Okay, next, we do the reverse of his second step as our second step. And instead of adding 7 like he did, we're going to take away 7 to both sides. You see that each time we do this, it takes away, uh, it makes the side with the x simpler. That's the idea. Finally, we multiply both sides by 7 to isolate the x by itself. Voila, x is equal to 728. All right, guys, it's more than halfway done. Uh, stick with me here. Question 17 from the 2010 test involves a lot of balancing. Uh, the picture shows a group of balanced objects. If we neglect the weight of the horizontal bars and vertical strings, the total weight of the group is 112 grams. What is the weight of the star? Now, the key information that I circled in red was really that we can neglect the weight of the string and the bars. So the only thing sh that should be pulling anything should be the actual objects attached to the strings and if everything's balanced that means weight on either side of a joint should be equal so what we're going to have to do is go along each joint make sure the weight's equal on either side by dividing the whole weight in half and continuously do this down the line all right let's get started with the balancing question we know the whole apparatus weighs 112 grams now, we know that each side of this top bar has to have equal weight hanging off of it, so each side has 56 grams hanging off each side. If we look closer now to the right, looking at this own set of brackets, we know that this total has 56. So each side of this smaller bar has to have 28 on either side, because 28 is half of 56. And we do this again, we see the next bracket down, Whereas we move closer to the star, because we're trying to find the star's weight, has 28 uh, gram weight overall, which means 14 on either side of this bar. And moving down to the final horizontal bar, 
there's 14 grams of weight overall hanging off the bar, which means 7 on either side. Therefore, the weight of the star must be 7 grams. Alright, so let's finish with a question about the length of jewelry. So a jeweler makes chains by connecting identical rings seen in picture 1. And the measure of the rings are shown in picture two. We want to know what the length of a five ring chain is. Now, we need to find the length of a chain, but figure one shows that we must consider the overlap of the rings. So when you consider a five length chain, it's not just gonna be the length of five ring segments altogether. That's why we need to consider the dimensions of the ring and seen in figure two. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the idea of the total length of five rings, and then we're gonna look at the picture of a five ring chain, and we're gonna subtract um, half millimeters as appropriate to find the full length of the chain. So we have our five rings. Um, basically, if the chain had no overlapping joints, the length of the chain would be the sum of the lengths of all the rings, which is which are four millimeters each, which would mean that in that case we would have a 20 millimeter chain. That's not the case though because we have the overlaps and that actually makes the whole chain less of a length than the chain that we would imagine. So the question is how much less? Well, we have four joints here and looking at figure two, we see that the width of a ring is a half a millimeter, so that means each joint is a millimeter long. So in actuality, the length of our real chain is four millimeters less than the chain that we thought of earlier, so it's actually 16 millimeters uh, long, basically because you lose some length of the chain at each uh, joint. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for being diligent and staying with me. Um, I wish you luck on the upcoming Kangaroo Math Canada test, and I hope that it stimulates an interest in you to at least check out math a little bit more, because I'll tell you something, it's really important in a lot of elements of your life, and a good handle on it now will help you a lot later. Have a great day.